right, welcome to the Wednesday, April 7th uh, DEI community call or DEI chaos call. The minutes are in the chat, so if you could add yourself, that would be wonderful. And tell us how you're feeling today. Take just a minute. I'm back. It's back to back to back to back to back meetings. And my last last one didn't give me a break, so. <clears throat> we had Don, I meant to ask, did you look up who else shares a birthday with you? Are there any famous people? It's a good question. I don't Upton, know. Upton Sinclair, author of The Jungle, a uh, uh, revelation of the Chicago meatpacking industry in the early 20th century, shares my birthday. Oh, I see. That's the only one I know. I'm sure if I went to Wikipedia, I could find 50 more. It is also a uh, first contact day. What does that mean? In, in Star Trek. Oh, uh -huh. like like the actual year. Uh, no. Oh, just the day. Just okay. the day. Um, no, because uh, let's see. Uh, now I have to look it up. Uh, It's like my allusion to Breakfast Club Day. It's another like movie day kind of thing. I'm glad you explained that because I saw that in whatever <laughs> minutes that was in and I was like, I have no <laughs> idea what that means. That maybe you had your own. No, I'm not sure. Somebody told me that it was, but now I think it's uh, maybe not right. It's, it's the day the Breakfast Club like had their detention. Yeah, it was the that's what Breakfast Club Day was. It was the date that was on the calendar for that Saturday. Oh, okay. That's hilarious. Yeah. My 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 daughter said that her social studies teacher was encouraging them all to vote. And she's like, this doesn't make sense for only 14. And I'm like, apparently somebody hasn't seen the Breakfast Club. Because <laughs> there's a scene for those of you who don't recall where where <clears throat> Anthony J. Anthony Michael Hall's character has a fake ID <laughs> and Judd Nelson's character is why. And, and 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 the geek is like, so I can vote. <laughs> I was totally wrong. It's April fifth. Somebody told me that it was April sixth, and they're they're totally wrong. And that person is my partner. So now I, you got I don't even talk, know what to do with him being that wrong about something so important. Got something to talk about I tonight. Got something <laughs> to talk about. I think he's got to spend like four days at the National Health Service getting cognitive testing. <laughs> All right, so uh, as we get started, congratulations to Ruth. She got nominated for a Google open source gift box for her contributions to chaos. Way to go, Ruth. Woo. Yeah, thank you. I was so happy yesterday when I got to view. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Super duper awesome. Yeah. Um, so as we get started, would somebody like to facilitate next week? I always look for a rotating facilitator in DNI, DEI, sorry. Did we find one last time? Yeah, it's you. I thought so. I was like, I think, I think I'm the facilitator this week. So um. okay. All right, so. takers, Nicole. Okay, I was going to say. <laughs> I'm, afraid, I'm afraid that unmuting is now <laughs> yeah. a vote to do it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, first I have to follow my sword. I sent Matt and, and ba the Badgie team um, uh, an apology for yesterday. Uh, so hopefully Matt and team saw that. Um, but I'd, I'd be, I, I was quickly checking my calendar. Um, Yes, I, I, I'll put my name down. Great. And we're always there to support and help, as you know. So, <laughs> um, so Sean, this is a small agenda the, yeah, I'm, put together, if you want to. Yeah, wanna... I'm, I'm going through my Zoom. I like to share the, the uh, I, like to, I like to share my browser, but it's like, where is my browser? Firefox. All right. Oh, okay. There we go. So our, our agenda today starts with the facilitator, and we have Nicole. 
and I don't remember, Nicole, your last name, you haven't put yourself in the minutes yet. So now I have to admit, I don't recall exactly how to spell your last name. H -E -S. Sorry, he's, yeah, H-U-E-S-M-A-N. And I will navigate there now. Like that? Yep. All right. Yay! <laughs> It looks like yeah. I've got a different meeting minutes than what's going on here. Yeah, me too. Okay. That's weird. Yeah, me too. Oh, it's it's super weird. Weird. I, I clicked, I thought I clicked what was shared in chat, but maybe I clicked. Some maybe of it's the same. <laughs> That's weird. All right. Let, me, let, me hit, let me hit reload because it, it um, gave me a weird message. So maybe, okay. Yeah, this is currently I had it cached. That no, says the error. Okay. okay. Sean, would you like me to take over? <laughs> yeah, it's like I've never All had right. this problem before. I don't know if somebody like probably we've up done the updates and um, let's see if it works one more time. It's not. Oh, oh yeah, no. I'm seeing that. Okay. Now, yeah, I think, I think I'm in these chaos spreadsheets. So uh, Google reset something last night. Um, <clears throat> where like all my accounts logged out and none of my cash Gmails are working. It's like my computer didn't change at all. So maybe I'm just recaching everything. Um, so I got facilitator for next week. So badging. Who wants to talk about badging? We have. Uh, I think this is the badging program. Right. These are all badging program related things because well, technically initiative, but we call it whatever we want to initiative, call it. Initiative, right? <laughs> but um, sometimes I forget which item of debate for the name we landed on. So it's initiative. Got it. So I can talk on badging a little bit. Um, we had uh, like like we uh, mostly know now the um, massive influx of badging review requests. We've had, um, we actually, so we've been looking for ad hoc reviewers. It looks like we got as many people as we could possibly want for this ad hoc system. And um, hopefully keep some of those people on for reviewers for the project, because it looks like we may have more applications coming in soon. Um, so I, I can't, I can't, I, you know, knock on wood. Um, but I, um, it looks like the last application that needs an assignment will get an assignment by the end of tomorrow. And I'm excited about that. Um, so, and then we got uh, quite a few of these events from this Kubicon space badge now. Um, so it's about half and half and we're finishing up the, uh, a bunch of them right now. So uh, on events, um, is there, I don't know who wrote this, but there there's, it looks like there's been some, some specific things to talk about. I wrote it. I think, I think Matt may have just been to celebrate the large number of large events that are starting to use the badging program. Yeah, so I think, you know, going through this process, this is specific to this, this working group, right? The process has revealed a number of different things that I think um, have both been helpful from the people doing the submissions. So for example, when whatever the half a or dozen events came in, right, there was a concern that the organizer wouldn't be able to respond to issues, you know, right as 12 events are being badged, there was concern that there would be a, as all questions are coming back from the issues, but I think that actually worked really, really well. So I was happy to see that. Um, I think, it, Matt, as you had talked about with respect to, to the number of reviewers, I think that worked out really well too. And thanks to everybody for kind of the short notice, you know, to step up and, and Matt, did you go through training with all of those folks too? I yeah, we have training. two more to onboard for the last events. Okay. I am trained. I'm so proud, Matt, Matt did a great job. <laughs> yeah. And so this is, I mean, that was really great because that was like in five days time to try to get, you know, maybe 10 additional, I don't know how many additional reviewers came on. So. Thank you to everybody who's not on this call. Thank you to Matt for helping kind of facilitate all of that. Um, there were a few things that I think came up. One, 
So this is the first one with respect to badge was mine. Um, so I've been taking a look at the events that are badged and just kind of seeing how they display it just out of curiosity, right? So like, is it up front? Is it down low? Is it on a DNI page? And do we care about that at all? So should, do we wanna provide any guidance as to what to do with the badge and maybe text associated with the badge? The answer could be no, the answer could be mm -hmm. yes. Do people have thoughts on that? Because we don't currently provide guidance. We just say, here's the badge. I, I think we would want to provide them an easy way to put the badge on every single GitHub repository associated with that event. And but typically, typically the badge shows up on their web pages, on the oh. event web pages is where it shows up. And I think I think that's good. I think um, some kind of badge that shows up on GitHub is better because it gets more developer eyes than a website. So it's it creates understanding that this DNI badge is a thing for a much larger audience. And I don't know if we want to badge it. Uh, basically, maybe give them a stage of event badging current. Or, and that would be the badge. My only comment on that is, I don't know that events are really using GitHub in that way. Um, if, so, yeah, I agree. I'm just so, thinking in terms of promotion because all of the events are definitely around GitHub kinds of repositories. So, this is what was well, this? What do you? These well, are just like, it's like KubeCon or OSS yeah. Summit North America. Like they have the yeah, page yeah. that you go to register and they're just saying, here's our speakers, here's our schedule. Just the... So if, a, if the maintainers of a repository participate in a conference, I'm just thinking of where the developers are looking and trying to create greater awareness of what DNI is. If it's on the website, then awareness is limited to the times that people go to that website. If there's something we can put in their GitHub repository, because there's a lot of badging on a lot of these GitHub but repositories. But we're, we're not badging the projects, we're badging the event. Right. This may be relevant for project badging too, though, and, uh, and events that, I, I've seen events that are focused on, out of GitHub for some, I think. So what I can say to this is that we provide a, a markdown embed link um, so that you can put, place it in any markdown document and it'll, show, it'll display the badge and link back to the original issue. We also mm -hmm. do that with an SVG and a high quality PNG just for the image itself. Um, these are the formats that we provide to them. If right now, we just kind of leave it up to the event organizers to how they're going to display that badge. Yeah. Do we instruct them on how to um, talk about the badge? No, no. this okay. is it. Like we, we issue the badge and then that's kind of the end of the process. You know what I mean? And so there's yeah. no guidance beyond that. Yeah. I kind of ran into it when I was um, doing it for Berlin Buzzwords, the, the social tile, and then, you know, going through I kind of, I think I mentioned this last time around, going through the um, the application, it was when we were talking about the consistency of reviews. And, 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 and figuring out, okay, how, how would you, how would you say this in a tweet or what would you say on the social tile? And, um, I, the reason I ask, that's, that's one of the reasons I'm asking the question. The other one though is to enable um, or empower the folks who are, or, or the event and the event organizers who have um, achieved this badge to allow them to talk about it. Um, you know, maybe giving them some words to use around it or um, to, to basically enable them, you know, if we want to increase visibility of, 
the badging initiative, <laughs> um, then it would be great to for for us as the Chaos Project not just to uh, promote that, but to enable them, the organizers, to promote that as well, because that's the uh, the the perspective I'm having this morning anyway. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So I'm capturing a few things here. So, I mean, a lot of these would just be like suggestions, right? They're just guidance. So right. like here, here would be a social tile that you could use in the promotion of the event that's associated with the badge. Here is perhaps some text to include on the web page associated with the event, the badge, and then Sean, to your point, maybe encourage placement on the website as well as any event associated repositories. Yeah, and where does the where does our badge, when you click on a badge, it takes you somewhere typically, where does our badge take you? There are a review process issue right now. So that might, so it's, it's what you demonstrated or taught me how to do yesterday. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. That's, that's about the granularity that a lot of these badges operate at. I was thinking, and the issue, maybe the issue, does the issue include a link to what the badging program is about? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, if we did that, then you're giving people who are curious about what that badge means another place they can go to learn more about the badge as well. I'm thinking only in terms of marketing and promoting the idea of diversity and inclusion being a badgeable, you know, thing that we care about in open source. And I think if there's something in a repo that gives you a much like a exponentially greater exposure than if it's on a event website that once the event is over is never visited again. I am not following your repo thing here. So, so, so when I go to an event, you badge an event, you put the badge on the event. I go to that website up to and through the period of time of that event. And then I never go back to that website. So the fact that it was badged has a very short awareness lifespan. If I'm working on Kubernetes, and this is a good example because it's one that would fit, and Kubernetes is participating in KubeCon. Um, you know, it could be um, whatever our badge says, 2021, and <clears throat> or current, whatever we want it to be. And then that badge, so now everybody who visits that repo sees that badge. And that's thousands of people visiting that repo for years after, or at least a year after the event itself. Now you have more people who are likely to have some curiosity. Maybe it's a hundred, maybe it's 10 to see what is that badge. And then if we have a link in the issue that tells you a little bit more about the badging program, you're, you're giving thousands more people and, and on a global scale, tens or hundreds of thousands of more people a way to learn more about diversity and inclusion in open source where through the badging program. And where would you recommend like that occurs? I put like somewhere in the repo, like in the repo. So, like, yeah, so github.com, just go chaos. Um, this is, <laughs> I'm fixing something. So this is gonna look like not awesome badging wise, but uh, cause I've got two failing builds, but they're failing because the data chip, the, they're not really failing. So Augur has um, build failing or build success, you know, build passing for two branches and then a CI, Linux Foundation um, CIA best practices badge. And so when people look at a repo or they're exploring a repo and they wanna understand it, the thing that's usually at the top of the repo itself are these badges. And some repos have like a dozen badges on them. If every time someone new or somebody who uses this repo goes back and, and takes a look at it, sees a badge for a DNI badged event, remember now, if it's just on the event website, nobody ever really sees that again after the event. If it's here, we're providing a way for people to see it for a long period of time. And so literally lots and lots of more people, I'm saying thousands or tens of thousands more people, 
are going to have some curiosity and learn more about diversity and inclusion badging and what that means in open source. And I think that has a lot of positive effects for promoting um, some of the things the DNI Working Group has long worked to promote, and also raising, I don't know, creating larger awareness that the DNI is part of a thing in open source in general. So I'm I'm, I'm looking at a marketing value more than a, anything else. So this leads me to believe um, we have event badging and eventually project badging, and we have. Um, Right now we have one badge that has a chaos circle and says DNI and says their level of badge. The problem there is that they they could pass that off as a, like they could just put the badge on there and say chaos DNI and you wouldn't know what kind of badge it is. So that leads me to believe that we need to start doing something a little more reasonable, reasonably um, full with the badging standard. Uh, like like something like following IMS open badges before we can start to ask people to cross pollinate their badges mm -hmm. uh, from 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 repo to event or event to repo. That's a little bit of a tangent on your tangent, but <laughs> yeah. And I was thinking even if it was um, event, if the if the word event was in the badge, you know, DNI event badge yeah, or something, yeah. then that would. And if it said the year. Yeah, you're, you're constraining what the badge means, but you're also raising awareness of the program. Yeah, we might need to think through that a little bit. Just yeah, uh, clearly a new idea, but yeah, I'll bring that up yeah. at next week's badging meeting, eight thirty central every every Wednesday. Uh, if anybody wants to come, I'll give you details if you want. Yeah, cool. Um, Matt, I might also recommend. And this, I think, is tied to this, like a reconsideration of the image. It's so small sometimes on pages that I had seen. And it it also only has the chaos. This is branding again, but it only has the chaos circle. Like I'd love to see the chaos, the entire chaos name in that badge. Yeah, sounds great. I, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at a summer project of implementing open standard or open badging standards for badging but i haven't really brought it up yet so this is, i guess that's that's me bringing it up <laughs> right on um so on this list the other thing that had come up during the review process was with respect to speaker demographics and i actually think ruth you were talking about this earlier in the call before we started recording so um, Matt, do you have thoughts? So we've updated the speaker demographics metric to be more deliberate with respect to how selection committees are created and how keynotes are selected. So has that, I know the metric we worked on the metric to update that. Have you thought about that into the badging process at all? Yes, um, we have. So we have some updates that before the freeze for the review process. I'm going to share the poll here. It's poll request number 69. And we've got um, this um, poll request where we're kind of walking back on the um, asking events for now to, to display these demographics. Because a lot of time, they, th there's a lot of situations where they can't have them or they don't have them until the event is right up to the event or after the event. Um, and, and then so we're, we're moving that to requesting feedback from speakers and we're um, just removing it from the attendee demographic section. But overall, we don't want to uh, we, we want to add these things to the to the demographic section. We just have to be careful like this is a situation with with Kubicon and the co-located events where we had to um, we have to stop. We have to postpone our our, our review process updates, our, our, our launch basically for this uh, next review, um, because we have this lapse of like, we have to assign some reviews and uh, so so we're we're stuck right now where we can't change it yet until these reviews are assigned. But then we're going to um, be adding some more information to the demographics uh, as as the metrics are updated. 
Okay, so that would include kind of the point you were talking about with displaying the demographics and then maybe some more clarity on how the committee themselves is actually attending to DEI, is that right? Yeah, to be honest, that would be part of some kind of um, interim update as we have as we have uh, uh, between application cycles, basically. But uh, yeah, okay. we, we got it in the works. Okay. I think a lot of these, like what I just typed there, like how DEI is attended to in the selection committee, agenda setting, and keynote selection. Like, I don't imagine a lot of these, I, I've never seen a conference as anybody that explicitly states how this is done. Like the, you know, like when we're doing chaos con, right? So if we're trying to to be conscious of DEI as we're say doing agenda setting. I've never seen a conference say, this is how we ensure that the agenda is also equitable to all attendees. I don't think I've ever seen that. Has anybody seen that, something like that? Like explicitly stated on a conference website? That it's equitable? Yeah, so like, hmm. um, Right, this had come up that sometimes like DEI talks are kind of put into a DEI track and it's just like kind of marginalized in the conference as its own thing. Like DEI is not necessarily centered in the conference or the keynotes are all white guys, right? When you look, so yeah. there was like no, they're all the invited speakers. And so there was no real attention to keynote selection. And so this is all with respect to speaker demographics, I think is where this falls. And I've never seen a conference like talk, like actually post the processes that they use to ensure that DEI is centered in the conference or the event. But I think this is something that we, people care about and we care about, so. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Um... I want to ask Amy uh, if she has seen anything over on the OpenStack side. Um, what I started to notice was that the OpenStack community was doing a phenomenal job of, uh, at least from a gender perspective, of, of women keynoting, being on the keynote stage at OpenStack summits. Um, but whether it was ever spelled out in the way that you're talking about this is how we select the yeah, keynote speakers that see. kind of thing I, i'm not sure i'd and it'd be interesting um to ask either um amy or armstrong if they ever saw that right and so that would be interesting if, if we could i'm guessing no like there's a kind of an internal process, but articulating it for others, I don't, I don't know. I don't so usually I, see it on the event website, but I have seen um, a lot of conferences write blog posts about how they ran the process and okay. what they did and, you know, like the process they use. Like there's a blog post, oops, um, from from DevOps, DevOps Days London, which I was involved in was something that we we cared a lot about inclusivity. And it wasn't just around the CFP, but it was around like like lots of stuff here. I'll drop it into the chat. That's great. So it's exactly it's like describing how as you said, yeah, so it wasn't, it's cool. I, I don't remember. I think we had some of it posted on the website itself, but um, the way DevOps Days works is once the CFP is over and done, like the speakers page replaces it. So I think we had some stuff there about the process. Gotcha. So then do you, from a review perspective, 
do you think that during the review, like say Nicole's doing a review, like just having a conversation with the organizer is enough to kind of be satisfied with that? Or would it be something that we might ask a group to say, hey, listen, if you want to get this check, you know, you have to do a blog post or you have to post it on the web and what people's thoughts are. Honestly, we need to increase the difficulty of the badge. Everybody so far has been gold <laughs> and I want to see some some passing and some silver so that people have stuff to work on. If you give someone gold, that should be the point where they where they um, feel like they've got most of it down, at least. Um, and I, I feel like we need to make it just harder to get a badge. I was also wondering if people who uh, may be intimidated by the process and think that they may not get a gold badge, so they're not going to apply because they don't want to look bad um, mm -hmm. since, you know, it's all transparent and open and they don't want to draw any attention to anything that they're lacking. So uh, that was just a, a thought that I had. I wondered if, if that was a, a problem or not. A great question. I don't have an answer for it for sure. I have a, a related, sort of related question. Um, I know that uh, a few conferences will upfront state um, the the compensation that they provide to speakers if they pay for travel or if they pay any kind of stipend. Um, but I've also seen it done like in the diversity side, like under the diversity inclusion page, they talk about, you know, how they want to make it accessible to be a speaker. Um, so I don't, is that something we ask about is, is compensation if they're co compensating their speakers and if they're paying for travel and if they state that stuff out, you know, explicitly on the website, do we ask about that? I don't think we do. We have it, the support tickets are the only ticket. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's support for tickets. Travel support is, would be a separate item. Are there, so are there we... conferences that do that on open source? Yes, what I that pay for? So. Pay yeah, for travel yeah. Because I think I have tried. Um, I think it was um, Py PyCon. Uh, so when I tried applying, they put it out that okay, if you do not like, if you need the uh, help with uh, speaker equipment like microphone, they would be happy to give that or help you out with that. So I've I've had I've seen it on one. Mm -hmm. I've seen it on numerous. Um, yeah, if they'll, sometimes they'll say if your company doesn't pay, because some companies will pay, you know, to send their people to speak at conferences, but they'll mm -hmm. say if your company doesn't pay, then let us know, and we will we will reimburse you or we'll compensate you for your travel expenses. That's nice. Are we talking? Um, oh, sorry. Uh, are we talking about uh, compensating just uh, speakers who are there? Or are we talking about um, attendees as well? I had attendees I in my mind. Speakers. Oh, yeah. I was just talking about speakers. Um, I think like that would be a lot to ask for, attend, you know, to pay for an attendee travel, but it is part of the diversity access tickets, maybe. I don't know. ACM does some of that for the academic work that I do. Um, so it's not unprecedented, but might not be. That's why I was asking about resources for that in open source, because I didn't, hadn't heard of it. So. Yeah, the, the reason I was asking the question is, uh, that, um, and so is, is it KubeCon or KubeCon? <laughs> and maybe Don. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm totally, it's I'm baffled. It's KubeCon. Um, the people who organize it say KubeCon. However, Cube, there Cube. are some very um, uh, influential bloggers like Alex Williams from the New Stack. Everybody at the New Stack says KubeCon, but it's wrong. <laughs> that's so it's what I just heard. <laughs> <laughs> and it's cube. It's not cube. It's cube. Like cube, kubecon. Oh, kubecon. Okay. Kubecon is it? It's not kubecon. It's kubecon. Yeah. There's no extra a in, in between the cube and the con. Cube. Just kubecon. Is it <laughs> okay? Is it y y or just o? Like <laughs> right, right. I know. This is I'm like, is a like a nuance that I I am not 100 percent sure, but it's like it's Kubernetes, so I think KubeCon. Okay, that's how I've always said it is KubeCon. Okay, yeah. Um, 
Because I work with a couple of people who are on the organizing team, like Steve and Augustus, and he says KubeCon or KubeCon. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I was going to mention um, KubeCon's diversity scholarship fund. Right. So they do um, make compensation, uh, you know, for, for a tent. Now, some of those could actually be speakers, like, but for a, a, attendees. Sorry, that was off tangent a little, but I think that's it's interesting to find out about because I know a lot of people can't afford to speak at a conference, pay for their own travel and, you know, and then take time off work and all of that. So mm -hmm. I think that's really important um, if, a, if a conference is able to do it. So it's something we might want to ask about in the future. I don't know. I put it down in the, in the minutes, like under a possible new metric for travel support. Um, all right. And then the, actually, this is kind of interesting because the last thing that I had with, re with respect to badging is that all, a lot of maybe 90% of the events that have applied so far are coming from pretty well financially supported corners of the open source world. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to it does not need to be solved now, but it just crossed my mind. Like some of the smaller conferences that are trying to to be attentive to to DEI within their events, like they just may have, in this case, no ability to provide financial support. They may have no ability to provide like on-site childcare. Like they just don't have the resources to do it. So, just something we might want to think about in the future. Right. Um, that is true. So it, it's like if if they don't have those resources, then are, are they then penalized because of it? Right. Right. Yeah. And they're really trying very hard to center DEI in their event, but they just simply cannot provide. Yeah. Some of the things yeah. They ask for sometimes. So just. But maybe too. That's to the to the batching point, like I think it's 80% of like things accomplished can get you a gold badge. So that's, that's okay, right? Like, it's not like it has to be everything. So maybe that's still okay. I personally, I think I have an idea for that, but I'll save it till the next badging meeting. <laughs> okay. I'll keep you all in suspense as a cliffhanger. I am totally in suspense, so. All right, well, okay. Um, Sean, can you scroll sure. up a little bit? Sure. More. Oh. So can you scroll up to today? <laughs> yeah, yep. Uh, cool, so I had just dropped in a few other things. The DEI update, you know, I'm just slowly going through the repository and the website, it's at this point, it's basically as I see things, I'm updating DNI to DEI. So I just saw another one that I'll like in the metric side of things. So it's, it's kind of ad hoc at the moment. Hey, Matt, on that, um, just mm -hmm. real quick, I tried to change the meeting uh, itself, but I, I don't have the um, capability to do that. I think Georg has to do that. So if you have anything like I didn't, I was going to send him a separate email, but that seems, I don't know, maybe that's fine. You know what I'm talking about? No. On the chaos calendar, it's still yeah. listed as diversity and inclusion. And I tried to change the name of the meeting to DEI. It's changed already. Oh, yeah. there you it go. Was, yeah, it was just DEI like when I went this morning. Yeah. Nice. No, no, no. I just I changed to change it, right it yesterday. Now. Oh, yeah. Oh. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> it was a different meeting. It's all good there. You should write that down as an action item for me, please, and then <laughs> cross it off so yeah. I can. <laughs> All right. Um, I just, I was looking back at some of the other, um, other things from the last meetings. I just wanted to bring this back to the top for OSS EU. And Nicole, Ruth, and Matt are all on this call, which is awesome. You had 
talked about submitting or putting together a document. Do you remember what, I don't remember what this was about. So do you remember what it was about? <laughs> this is a great question. And Thank I'm trying to rack my memory. <laughs> yeah. I think probably, I, probably I think a badging, a badging program talk would be great. Yeah, I, and I believe that's what it was, was about the badging initiative. Oops, sorry. And, um, I keep hitting my uh, keyboard. That's why the meetings keep, the minutes keep scrolling. Uh, and um, I mean, and now I'm having, I don't know if I had these ideas before or now, but, um, you know, with, with all of the um, uh, applications uh, coming in and, and all of this, and we've got, you know, folks who have received or events that have received gold now and all of that. Um, it, it just seemed like there was a, a groundswell of things to talk about in the badging initiative. Awesome. No. I think that would be great. Matt, did you? Sorry. Um, with badging, we're doing a, a talk at um, the IEEE SA Open uh, Marketing Advisor Group about about um, badging and metrics and how you meld those together. And I think that I think that would be a great thing to talk about if we had the opportunity. We'll, we'll talk about it offline. Um, but like, uh, I think we, ha we have a lot of really good ideas about things to talk about. So we'll have to narrow it down to one. I honestly won't be too available until after the wedding and honeymoon. And, and that's at the beginning of June. So I, I think that's the time I can start cramming on working on that um, proposal if that's fine. Okay, um, I can actually start working on it. So because of, uh, I had like um, a very scattered week last week, so I can, I actually forgot. So I, I can actually start working on that next week since we have to like June 13th. Then um, there was a time that um, there was a suggestion about a panel. So I think, yeah, I don't know about that. I think there was a suggestion once about a panel right um from um yes. yeah, and d and i yeah so yep. that's when um that conversation started then there was also an idea brought up like we could also talk about badging separately as like a separate um talk from panel so yeah that's right cool so i have to step out for a minute so. okay I mean, I actually like the idea of a talk about the badging program, like here's what it is. And I don't know what people would think about like lessons learned, like as we're going through this, here are the things that we have learned from our side, you know, like we had a, we had a plan in place, right? And this is a, a learning process for us too. And it's, um, I mean, it's things like you know, connecting the metrics to your point, Matt, like connecting the metrics to the process. Like how, what does that look like? And how do we come to understand that? Um, how do we accommodate events from all different types of, of communities, right? Like these are, it might be really interesting. Like these are the things that are on our minds too. And if you're interested in helping us talk through these, <laughs> join us, you know? All right, it cool. seems like it would invite engagement. Yeah, I think so interaction. too. Yeah, when you kind of reveal what is challenging for you, that a lot of people have advice <laughs> on how to how to make things better. I think so too. Yeah. Um, all right. So the the last thing that I had dropped in there was. Sean, can you scroll down just a little bit? Yes, I can. Nope, you were on the right thing, yeah. Down. Or up. In the UK, I, it's probably the opposite. <laughs> I have no idea. What, do you want to go earlier or later? Stop. Stop right there. Just, nope. Go, nope. Go back. Down. That's okay. So anyway, there's a metrics link in there. And I just wanted to confirm this, this metrics tracking sheet link. Yep. I yep. So if there you click go. on, yeah. so yep, scroll down to the yellow ones, the under community review. These have been released. Is that correct? I was just going to track these. 
I don't know. I know we updated them in risk and um, evolution recently. I'm pretty sure they've been released. <clears throat> Somebody double check me. And we are two minutes left as the facilitator. Has anybody double checked that those are released? Project burnout. Well, you can just check right now. <laughs> see okay so chat platform inclusivity yes they've all been released okay so good on that and then as i was kind of looking at this do you see oops, okay. see oops stop. um <laughs> row fit stop row 53 <laughs> so this is the only one the only reason that this was kind of drawn to my attention is that in the badging program, we'll keep talking about that, but one of the things that we ask for is an enforcement. Does everybody recall this when you're doing reviews? Mm -hmm. it's like, I don't know if, if we should have this as its own metric, if this is something that we should not necessarily have. I know this is in governance right now, it's not necessarily with events. We have code of conduct at events as a metric. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering Code of conduct is stated in most repositories that there's a code of conduct and the enforcement mechanism is typically emailing a subset of people who are responsible for reviewing concerns that the code of conduct has been violated. So enforcement is, I really, it's a lot of it, at least as I've seen so far, is just identification of people to contact if you feel that it's being violated in some way. Yep, and we do ask this in the review process. So it's kind of right now it's kind of tucked into code of conduct at an event. Mm -hmm. Right. So is it is it worth making its own metric or is it probably or is it smarter just to look at the code of conduct metric and explicitly talk about enforcement and we don't pull it out as its own metric. So, and I point out the code of conduct at an event is different than code of conduct in the repository. Yep, and we have two different metrics for that. Mm -hmm. So this is the repository one on line 53. Then what is 52? Oh, it says for project. So we are uh, at the end of time. We can pick yeah, this up next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, code of conduct is having a code of conduct and enforcement is having people to contact with conduct within that code of conduct. At yeah, the I understand. I under level. Yeah, I get the difference. And so we have one not for we have code of conduct at event as a separate metric. I think they are separate metrics. Okay. <laughs> okay. We can discuss it next time when Nicole is the facilitator. Yes, we will. Well, I will put All that right. on the agenda to start with that. All right. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.